In this video, we're going to begin creating a fender flare off of an MR2 scan, starting with Fusion 360 forms. Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design, and in this video, part two, we're going to begin creating a fender flare using Fusion 360 forms. Now, the first one that we're going to do is we're going to take a look at more of the partial fender, sort of the rocket bunny style, where we have a fender flare that might go down to meet a side skirt, and then it sort of ends near or at the rear bumper. Now, that's a little bit tricky on this car because the rear bumper actually cuts in fairly high. So we're gonna to have to carry it down probably to about the midway portion of the bumper. What we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about creating a form body that sort of matches the shape of the car that attaches to it. And then we're gonna build out from there. So let's get started. And again, this scan was provided by one of our subscribers and I'm not gonna be sharing the data with you uh, because you know he obviously spent a lot of time and money scanning this and it's just not right for me to share that with you. So unfortunately, if you want to follow along, you're going to have to either get a car model, use one that we've worked on before, and you can convert it to a mesh using the Tessellate option, or you can download a mesh version. There are tons of cars that you can download online. Um, throughout these various uh, video series that we did, we modeled the Ferrari. We've got enough of a Subaru WRX that you can download. And we've also, uh, I've also provided a Camaro model for the rendering series. So there are at least three cars that you can take a look at and download that you can work with. Or again, you can find mesh cars wherever. You can get a couple free in Blender. And again, you can just look online and you'll probably be able to find one for free. So what we're going to be doing from here is we're going to go to our solid tools and we're going to create a form body. Unlike creating a form body when you have a solid or a surface, you'll notice that the mesh bodies stay here. Now, obviously we don't need the rim, we're gonna use it as a reference, but we're not attaching to it. But we do need this body, we are gonna be attaching to it. And this left side of the car has the gas door on it. Um, so that's something that we need to be mindful of. I'm actually not gonna worry about the gas door just yet. That's something that we're gonna have to come back um, and cut out. So a lot of times what you'll see is a fender flare might carry on and just sort of bump around that, or sometimes there'll be an additional fuel door that you can add to a kit depending on where the kit goes to. So again, this first style, we're gonna take a look at sort of the partial fender flare rocket bunny. Some of them come in sort of in the middle of the car. Uh, some of them will come in all the way at the bottom and sort of make up the gap for a fender, a fender flare or a, a skirt that flares out on the bottom. So it really kind of just depends on what your style is. Now I do have some ideas for a larger fender flare that we're gonna take a look at, but this is the sort of the first example that we're gonna do. So I'm gonna start like I start most of my designs with uh, just a box. So we're gonna use a plane, you can use the face option, and we're just gonna make a rectangular section. For this example, uh, I am gonna start with just a one by one. And then I'm going to say, OK, now I have a single face. I'm going to use modify and I'm just going to sort of pull it up. I don't exactly know where this is going to be, but this is going to be part of my flare. And I have that. The next thing I want to do is I want to create a cylinder. On the cylinder, I'm actually going to draw pretty close to the wheel. And what we need to do is we need to develop the inside of the fender. So I'm going to rotate this around. And for the height faces, I'm going to set this at one. For the diameter faces, I want to increase this to 16. I want a pretty high resolution. Then I need to decide what needs to actually get deleted. So I'm going to go to modify. I'm going to select body, and I'm going to move this entire body so that it's out where the wheel needs to be. You'll notice that the wheel has a little bit of camber to it. Uh, that's OK. We obviously want that to stick out a little bit. So we're just going to pull it until it's right about where that tire is and I'm gonna to rotate to the side. I'm gonna change my selection back to all, and that looks pretty good. So I'm pretty happy with the location. I'm gonna say okay, and then I wanna delete the stuff I don't want. Right now I'm in smooth display. We can go back and forth between box and smooth. We are gonna be looking at both, but for right now I'm actually gonna stick in smooth display. 
So for this example, I'm gonna bring it down just above where the side skirt, in this case, the stock one doesn't have a real side skirt, it's just a, a detail, but I'm gonna come down to about there. So I wanna find where that point is, it's pretty close, and I wanna delete sort of everything there. Now you'll notice that I'm still on my, uh, my paint selection, so I wanna to go to window selection. And when I do this, notice that I'm actually selecting the mesh, and I don't wanna do that, I only wanna select the form body. So in my selection tools, under selection filters, we can turn off the mesh bodies and mesh faces and mesh face groups, at least for right now. We're gonna need them at some point, but for right now, we can uh, turn those off. So I'm gonna delete to get rid of that. And then for the back, again, I'm, I'm only gonna go to about the midpoint of the bumper. We could go down further if we wanted to, but again, it's sort of a stylistic thing. So now I've got the starting of this flare. And the reason I'm leaving it in smooth display at this point is because I actually wanna move these around to get a little bit closer to the original shape. So we're gonna box select. So we're grabbing the entire edge. If we rotate it, you can see that entire edge right there. And I'm just gonna begin pulling this out. I wanna find where the next one is. I'm gonna pull it out. Find where this one is. I'm gonna pull it out and down. Now, lucky for us, this is not a true um, sort of arc. In some cases, the upper portion of the wheel well will be a true arc. This is not. We're going to have to do a little bit of work to make sure that it looks right, but I just want to get it visually close to the mesh for right now, and then we can deal with uh, some of it a little bit later. So again, just going to manipulate these. Now, this is the point where is if you're cutting the fender out, if you're actually going to increase or, or potentially decrease, depending on the look you're going for, this arc here, then you don't have to match what's here, but it is a good idea for you to uh, sort of match the shape. And then you can use tools like scale and you can scale the entire thing up or down if, uh, if that's what you wanna do. I'm gonna use control Z to undo the scale, but just note that uh, if you're trying to match the shape, that's what you should do. The next thing that we wanna do is we're gonna double click on this front edge I'm gonna go back to a right-hand view. I'm gonna use Alt and Control. I'm on a PC and I wanna extrude this out and I'm gonna extrude it out with a crease. That's why we're using both Alt and Control. Uh, it's Option and Command if you're on a Mac. Again, we're still in smooth display and what I wanna do now is these edges that we see, I want to visually make them point to the center of the wheel. So I need to figure out what this fender flare is gonna look like and I want to try to get each of these edges by moving the vertices around to be pointing so that they would intersect the center of my wheel. Now, this is important for a couple different reasons. It's, it's important, one, for consistency. Having that sort of um, guide or that intent there is gonna help us stay consistent around all of these, especially when we're working in smooth display. But also, that's gonna give us the best patch layout or the face layout as we go away. Not all of them are going to be able to do that. So for example, here, we're probably gonna end up going horizontal, but at least at this point in the design, I wanna to try to make all of them point to the center of the wheel. It'll help keep them a consistent width as well. And there are other ways you could do this besides doing it manually. Uh, this one down here that's really low, that one's pretty straightforward. It's gonna be horizontal, but all the rest of it looks pretty good. Now you can see that some of them are probably a little bit different size. so. I'm gonna spend the time now to begin tweaking these. Generally, I would not do this this early in a design. I would, I would take my time and, and rough out the shape. But at this point, I think that just getting this lip fairly, uh, you know, fairly close is gonna be good for us progressing through the shape. For the next part of this, now we need to decide where we want this flare to go. So if we're trying to mimic the original shape, which makes sense, if we're trying to just simply go to where the original sort of ridge in the fender, remember that this is, is not actually a real fender flare. On the actual car, it's just a sort of a stylized detail. So if we're trying to sort of just widen this and go up to there to keep that original look, that gives us a really good reference point, okay? So I'm gonna double click this outside edge. I'm gonna hold down Alt. I'm not gonna use Control in this case. I'm gonna hold down Alt. Actually, I'm gonna do this from the back. There's less car that'll be in the way. And I'm just going to extrude this up. I'm gonna take it pretty close to there and just sort of extrude it up. I don't have to touch the surface. I just wanna get close. 
Now we're going to have to spend some time fixing the shape because obviously the car flares forward a little bit, but now we've got the rough shape. I'm going to start manipulating these. Again, I'm still in smooth display mode. We can go back and forth between box display. Um, I, I will typically work in box display mode, but it is important that we understand that the control points on the box display and the ones on the smooth display are in different locations. So when you're working in box display, you just you need to be mindful of where you're putting these points. And since we're attaching to a car body, we actually have a little bit of leeway here. So I'm going to pull this straight out and I'm going to pull it away from the car body. And the reason I'm doing that is because I want to be able to see where these points are in 3D. So I'm going to grab that, go back to my top view. I'm going to pull this forward and I'm going to find the next one. Because I don't have mesh selection turned on, I can very easily just hover over those cursors, those points. These are all in front, so that's okay. All right, so now this last one here, that's inside of the body. I'm gonna go ahead and just pull that one forward until it's out front and go back to a side view. Okay, so now at this point, we still want to carry on with these vertices pointing toward the center of the wheel. And again, that's why I took the time to sort of get those right at the beginning, because this is gonna help us determine where these other vertices need to be. So again, I'm gonna sort of move around, trying to maintain a straight line. And we could use other tools like straighten, but um, that's gonna induce some potential problems in 3D for us. So for right now, I'm just gonna move them manually. This is also just to show you that it can be done manually. It is much better for us in the long run to use tools like insert edge and slide edge and offset and use the scale tools, but we can do this manually as long as we pay attention to where these edges are going. So again, I'm gonna move these around, trying to maintain, again, that straight line pointing toward the center of the wheel. So far, that looks pretty good. This one, I think, needs to come back a little bit. And then I'm gonna go into smooth display, and you can see in smooth display, that looks pretty good. That's, that's not too bad. We're getting the rough shape down. We have to determine a couple of things at this point. We have to determine how we're gonna to attach to the car, if we're gonna have a little lip, if we're gonna uh, design a lip on the inside of this, if we're gonna use you know, a, a recess and pop rivets, which we would design using our design tool or surface tools and our solid tools. So figuring that out is gonna be a, an important step in the process. If you want to make a small lip and you want this lip to be on the outside, then we can extrude this edge out once we get the shape right, or we can extrude it inwards and thicken everything. So that way you have a small lip on the inside. Another thing for you to really consider is, is how you're gonna make this. This part right now is digital, which means that you either need to use it as a visual reference and you need to make it manually with you know, potentially putting foam on the side of your car and sanding it until you get the shape right. Um, or you need to, you know, potentially 3D print some ribs, fill it with foam and sand it down. Uh, if you, um, uh, you know, this is a, a, a common method that was used to create sheet metal fenders. You create what's called a wooden form or a wooden buck, and then you could uh, hammer over that and you would use it sort of as a gauge so that your left and your right hand sides were the same. And, um, you know, so you'd build this sort of a skeleton and you would use these individual pieces and you could, you could use the same exact pieces for the left and the right hand side. You just had to pull them out, flip them 180, and then you could sort of make sure that your left and right fenders were the same. Now there are a lot of, there's a lot of information on doing that and we're not covering, you know, rolling sheet metal fenders or anything like that, but there are books out there. Ron Covell was one of the bigger ones that, um, that put out a lot of books. I'm sure there's millions of videos on it as well. Again, kind of outside of what we're talking about, we're more in the realm of 3D printing and, um, and scanning and that, that sort of thing. Okay, so now we've got the rough shape. We need to think about if we wanna add any detail to this. So we need to figure out again, how it's going to attach to the car. And if our, if our external shape is not close enough, if this is not close enough, and this is the time where we want to potentially add more divisions or we want to take the time to manually move this out. If you want the flare to be outside of that factory detail, then we want to pull it out. 
If you want it to be inside of that detail, then we need to pull it in. Uh, this is actually potentially a good place to sort of hide the interface between an added on fender flare and a factory one. But again, we just need to manually move these around. And in smooth display, as long as we sort of keep in mind that we want this to be a straight line, we're pointing at the middle of the wheel, it'll help us make a really nice, clean, consistent. Um, again, I call these patches, they're not really patches, but it's just a good term that I like to use. So these faces, it helps keep them nice and smooth and consistent. So again, that's, that's fairly smooth, it's fairly close to the body. And once we're happy with the rough shape, like where it ends at the body, that's when we can go ahead and we can pull it to the mesh. So we're gonna to go to modify, we're gonna select pull, and here we can have our target selection be auto, which means it's just gonna pull it to the closest mesh point, or we can manually select a target. When we're dealing with a mesh body like this, auto is the best option because we have all these little triangles. If we are dealing with a surface, however, or an edge, a, a curve or an edge, then the manual selection might be better. So if I select this vertex, even though we turned off the mesh selection, uh, you can see that it is actually pu pushing those down. And we can sort of rotate around. And you can see here, now we put all those onto the mesh itself. The number of divisions we have is going to get you closer to that shape. Now at this point, we didn't add any additional edges, but we could add more and get closer. So let's use Control Z, pull that back away. Let's go to Modify Insert Edge. I'm gonna double click on this edge. I'm gonna say both, but I'm gonna use Exact. I'm gonna say OK. And the reason I'm using Exact, and I'm gonna repeat this process here, is because Exact means that we are not changing the shape at all. If we're to use Simple, then simple is actually going to deform the shape. And this last one, I'm not using both, I'm just gonna use single. But now I've divided that up more. If I use control and four, you can see that we still kept that smooth shape. So um, again, using exact in this case, once we're happy with the shape with a lower number of face counts, that's when we really wanna spend, uh, you know, spend the time to use exact insert instead of simple. Okay. Before I go too much further, another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take that back edge. I'm going to go to a front or a side view, and I'm just going to pull it forward. Because in reality, you are not going to have a giant inner fender well like that. This, uh, this inside lip, again, depending on how you're manufacturing this, that inside lip will probably be um, you know, extended inward. And this is going to be that small lip that's going to be on your fender. And the, really, the only thing that that's doing is it's controlling or it's helping control that edge. So I just want to pull that forward a little bit. All right, so now is the point where we can go back to modify and pull. And now that we've got more vertices, we can begin just going, going and selecting those. So I'm just gonna go manually, and you'll notice that uh, I just double clicked on it and it was able to grab all of those and push them all to the surface. And now we can say, okay. So pretty good results so far. It looks pretty good, it matches the surface or it appears to. And, uh, and then we just need to sort of work on the finishing details, right? If we're gonna build a flange, if we're going to uh, blend this bottom shape in and how we're gonna do that. A couple words of caution for you at this stage. We need to determine any additional edges or control we want for the major portion of the shape. So in this case, what I would like to do is I'd like to double click on this. I'm gonna go to Modify, Insert Edge, I'm gonna do a simple insertion. Um, actually, I'm sorry, let's go ahead and we're gonna insert an edge. I, I clicked on insert point. Let's do a simple insertion. We're gonna use both. We're gonna do simple and I'm gonna tighten these up a bit. I'm gonna say 0.1. So what this is going to do is it's gonna add an edge on both sides. And because we're using simple, it's not gonna keep the shape that we have, this, this very smooth transition. So when I say okay, what we've done is we've created more of a creased edge, okay? So now it's very smooth because remember the insertion of amount, that, that 0.1 is gonna be 0.1 or 10% of the distance between these two edges, but then these are farther away. So it's 0.1 or 10% of the distance between these. So again, it gives us a really nice sort of a, a hard crease on this edge right here and a transition or a gradual transition here. Okay, so now if we want to add another crease, maybe partway through, 
If we wanna keep it smooth like this, that's perfectly fine. But if we wanted to add another crease, we could go to Insert Edge. This time I'm gonna say Single. I'm gonna put it on the other side. I'm gonna say minus 0 0.05. I'm gonna keep it pretty tight and say, okay. If I go to uh, Control-4, you can see that it really didn't do much for me. And that's because this is really straight right now, which means that we're not really changing much of the design. But this one had, a, it had an edge already. It had a, a, an edge that we could add to. So if we use Control-Z and Undo, and we wanna add some sort of detail here, the way that we go about that is by moving this edge first. So we have to be extremely careful here because we want the bottoms to stay where they are and we potentially want the tops to go. So it's gonna get a little tricky and I think that probably for this design that this shape matches the factory flare, I think I'm gonna leave it as is and I'm gonna work on filling the bottom in and blending that to the body. Before I get too much further, I'm gonna do a quick save since I haven't saved it at all. That way, just in case something happens to crash, we don't lose any work. What I wanna do from here is I want to figure out a way to carry this down and, and sort of bring it over to the body on this side. And I wanna do the same thing over here, except for it's gonna be a little bit more extended. So this one's gonna be a pretty sharp change and this one's gonna be more extended. So one way that we can do this is we can try to bridge edges together. Uh, it's gonna be a little tricky and we have to be very mindful of the number of edges or divisions we have. I'm gonna go into box display mode for this and note that we've got one face or one edge here, we've got one here and one here, but then we have these two additional ones inside. And this is where it becomes really tricky for us. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I am going to sort of reduce or move this edge a little bit closer so it's closer in line with this one here. So we're gonna to go to Modify Edit Form and I'm gonna view this from the bottom and I'm gonna begin moving this up. It doesn't have to be perfect. I'm gonna use 11, let's go to 12 millimeters and then we'll say okay. So now this gives me, uh, again, a little bit closer lip and then we're gonna extend this down to match this but we're not gonna worry about that just yet. So a way that we can do this is we can bridge between these, but this edge division is gonna be kind of tricky. So I'm gonna use Modify Edit Form. I'm going to Extrude, and we have to determine if we're gonna do this with or without a crease. I'm gonna do it with a crease for now because this is a creased edge. So Alt and Control and just pull it over this way. Then I'm gonna let go of that. I'm gonna do Alt one more time, not using Control. And then I'm gonna to go to Weld Vertices. I wanna bring the vertex that is on the, the new extrude out to the fender. I wanna do the same thing over here, bring that out to the fender. And then I wanna take this one over to here. Okay, so we've started patching that. And now if we go to smooth display, you can see that it's beginning to roll down. We've kept that crease here and this edge is sort of rolling under. It's easier for us to view this in box display and sort of work with it, but you can kind of see what we did there. So now I'm gonna take these two edges Modify, Edit Form, I'm gonna view it from the bottom. I'm gonna use Alt, again, not a crease, and I'm gonna pull this over. Now the next step for this is for us to reset our pivot. We're gonna select the vertex on the end of our extrude, and then we're gonna scale this out. And what we're doing is we're trying to scale it out until this is completely vertical. I'm gonna say OK from here, and then I'm gonna go back to Modify and Weld Vertices. Now, in this case, we have to think about moving, if we move this vertex to here, then it could potentially cause us a little bit of headache for this one in, in the middle. So I'm actually gonna move this over to here. I'm gonna say okay, and take a look at it in smooth display. So that doesn't look too bad. We were able to carry that edge. I'm gonna use control and four. We're able to carry that edge and sort of blend it out to the body. Now, we didn't finish off this inner lip in here. I'm gonna go ahead and do that before I uh, spend too much time fixing this. So back in box display, double click on that, modify. Again, I'm gonna view it from the bottom. I'm gonna hold down Alt and just extrude it straight back. So this is one nice thing about using the coordinate system as a reference as opposed to our selection or our view. It's very easy for us to do things like extrude and make sure that we're staying in line. 
Then again, we're going to weld vertices. I'm going to take this one here and um, move it there. And then we're going to have to go to smooth display and we're going to have to carry that crease down. So modify crease and make sure that that edge is creased and say, okay. We will have to go back and use pull again to pull some of these vertices back, but um, that, that pull tool that we're using, and if we use match, those are not parametric. We can move these around. They're not going to stay fixed to the mesh. So we do it very early on when we get our shape, and then we're going to have to do it before we're done as well. Okay. So now we've got that fender lip. If we want to make adjustments to its position, then we can do that. At this point, uh, you know, where it's matching the body, we need to keep it there. And then we could take some time to sort of, uh, sort of analyze where this is going. I'm not going to really spend a bunch of time on that because uh, that can be done manually and, and basically what you end up doing. Uh, you know, I'm sorry, let's go ahead and do it. Let's just, let's just make sure that we understand it. I'm going to hide the rim so we can see a little bit easier. And what I want to do is I want to select some of the edges. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select some of these edges that I want to pull in, not all of them, but some of them. We are going to reset the pivot point, just pick one of the ends, and then we're going to scale them in this direction. Okay. So remember that we are working in the X direction now and scaling them in this direction based on our, our pivot point is going to mean that they all stay consistent. We can pull this in and not worry too much. And then we can do the same thing over here. I'm going to reset the pivot. And the reason that we're resetting the pivot each time is because we want to pull it toward this portion of the fender flare. So uh, very easy to do. It just takes a little time. You can pick as many as you want, reset that pivot point each time. And then again, we're scaling in the X direction. So I want to pull that up and uh, we can do it here as well. I'm not going to do the last one because I I'm not done filling in that shape yet, but let's go ahead and rotate this around. And that looks pretty good. And again, we're using a wider wheel. So having the fender exactly match the originals, it doesn't make sense. We're going to have to cut something away to make that work. All right, let's go ahead and look at this from the side again. The shape is still fine. We haven't we haven't really moved anything around and now we have this nice smooth sort of mesh. You can see a bunch of these little mesh elements are left behind. They're still attached to the body. It was just part of our, our selection process. So again, let's do a quick save. Make sure we don't lose anything. Remember the forms workspace is not parametric. We're not capturing anything that we do. We're just simply making a design and we are destructive in nature. So we can add and remove edges and so on, but we, we are destructive. So now we need to figure out what has to happen on this side. I'm going to go back into box display. And again, we, we now have these edges that we can manipulate. I'm going to do the same exact thing to, to sort of fill in the other side, except for now I have this lip. So I'm going to take both of these, modify, go to a bottom view. Uh, we need to double click the mouse wheel to zoom out. And I'm going to hold down Alt and Control. I'm going to pull this out. And uh, then I'm going to leave it there. I'm going to say, okay, we're going to go to weld vertices and we're going to take this vertex to here. And you'll notice this sort of leaves this other stuff out in the open. So the way that I'm going to fix this is I'm going to, I'm going to weld these together and this is going to break it. All right. And that, and that's okay. I'm going to weld those together. I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to go to modify and fill this little hole. I'm going to say OK. And then I'm going to take this edge. I'm going to go to Insert Edge. It's on the wrong side. We want it on the negative side, but the value is still negative. So um, I'm going to do that. I'm going to say OK. And then I want to delete this edge, go to Modify, Insert Point, and I want to connect those. So a quick way for us to get that to work out going to go to a smooth display and you can see that we were able to carry that uh, that sort of that smooth edge we were able to carry it out I'm going to use control 4 just to hide it. it looks pretty good let's bring those back let's go back into box display and now I want to take this edge right here and I want to pull it out further the problem when I do this is it's going to affect the shape of the flare 
So there are a couple different ways that we can decide that we want to do this. We can extrude or add more geometry, or we can move it where we want it to, uh, where we want it to be, and then we can sort of deal with the, the ramifications of the shape. So I'm going to use that second option. I'm going to pull this down where I want it to be. And notice that now what's what's going to end up happening is, is we're sort of creasing this edge unintentionally. So I'm going to grab that. Remember, we are in box display mode. Grab that. I'm going to begin pulling that down. And again, we're looking for the situation where everything stays in line. So if you look on the inside lip of the fender there, what I'm doing is I'm moving this until that stuff is hidden like it was originally. And let's take a quick look in smooth display. So in smooth display, that looks okay, starting to flare down. If you want more control, if you wanna alter the shape more, then we're gonna to have to add more control. We're gonna to have to add another edge and, uh, and be able to control that. So that is a consequence that we're gonna to have to deal with. And we can do that by using insert edge. I'm gonna double click on this, noting that it's going all the way around the design. It's a complete loop. And notice that this first body that we created, I never even ended up using it. So I'm gonna delete it. The initial intention was uh, to sort of create the flare and then attach it to the inner lip, but that ended up not being the workflow. And sometimes that happens. Sometimes you have an idea of how you wanna start something and it just doesn't work. So it's fine, always be able to pivot and change directions. So now I wanna go halfway through. So 0.5, I'm gonna to go to exact, because again, I don't wanna alter the shape I've already made. Exact is gonna keep it the same, but one thing that you will notice happens is when we use exact, it had to add more edges in certain areas. Because the shape changes down here, we ended up having more divisions. And that's okay. That doesn't necessarily, it's not necessarily a bad thing at this stage in the game if we're done with our shape creation. We can always go back and we can try again using the simple insertion mode. So if I use Control Z, let's go ahead and double click on that. Insert edge. This time I will say simple. We'll say okay. And notice that it does change the shape a little bit. Now it's not drastic. Uh, all it did was it sort of widened it out a little bit. Uh, the, the shape is still nice and smooth. The, ref, the reflections that we see are nice and smooth when we rotate this around. So I'm not upset about that, but you do need to make sure that you inspect your designs to make sure that the simple insertion mode didn't change anything. Because we essentially had a straight line for the upper portion of our flare, simple didn't really have a, a negative or a drastic effect, but that's not always the case. It really just depends on your design. Now let's go to modify and edit form and let's let's sort of work on changing this again. So I wanna go back into box display mode. I want to take both of these edges. Now the reason I wanna take both of these edges is I wanna keep the width here consistent. It's gonna make a more gradual or rounded out section here, but I wanna to try to keep those consistent. So I'm gonna pull this down and then I'm gonna take this vertex and I'm gonna to try to bring it in. And you'll notice that when I do that, what's, end up, what's happening is this face right here is not working. And I'm not happy with that shape. So it needs to continue out or this vertex needs to come in and this one does as well. And again, the same thing that we've been doing the entire time is we are trying to keep a straight line or a consistent line. When I get to this top one, I don't wanna just move this vertex, I wanna take this entire edge. And the reason we need to take that entire edge is because we wanna keep this edge weighting and this edge weighting consistent. Let's take a look at it in smooth display mode. So you can see here, it's flaring out. We've got sort of that little angle, a little bit more style on the exit of that. That looks pretty good. Now is the point where we can go modify, go back to pull. And now I need to begin pulling all of these vertices. So if I double click, you'll notice it goes all the way around. However, that is gonna be problematic on the inside if we happen to be hanging over mesh anywhere. It's gonna start pulling some of that stuff around. So if that doesn't work, you need to make sure that you do manually go around and select the vertices that you do wanna to pull to the mesh. Not all of them are gonna move because we really didn't do anything drastic up here but it is a good idea for us to at least go, go around and just select those. 
and we'll grab that inside one and we'll say okay. Remember that we were moving surface points, we were not moving any of our control points. And it is important that we do use surface points here because that's the final shape. There are some areas where it does go through the mesh and part of that is because we don't have enough divisions here to completely capture the change in shape, but that is extremely close. Now, uh, if you're trying to manufacture this, then there are, there's more that we would need to do. But at this stage in the game, that looks pretty good. I'm gonna do another quick save. I'm gonna hide the body temporarily, and this is the point where we need to figure out what the backside of this is gonna look like. Now, if this is gonna be a, a thickened piece, then we can go to um, Modify and Thicken. We can select this, and let's say that it's gonna be five millimeters. The way that this works in Fusion 360 is you are better off extending this outward. So in this case, we would say minus five millimeters. And the reason I say that is because we worked on matching this fender or this, this shape to the mesh and pushing it outward is gonna give us the thickness in the correct direction. So we bring the body back. You can see there we've got this thickness. One great thing about doing this at the forms level is we can control the vertices on the inside and the outside. This also can cause some potential problems for us because it means that when we begin modifying these inside and outside faces or edges, we end up, we, we can run into a situation where they overlap or they self intersect. So we have to be extremely careful when we do this. Um, at this stage, what I would probably do is I would take this inside lip, I would go to insert edge, it's going to be minus 0.5. And I'm going to say, okay. So I've added this extra piece here because again, we have control over the inside and the outside. Now I want to use, let's see, we're going to go to modify and pull and I can pull these inside vertices to the mesh body. Now it gets a little tricky because it's hard for us to see. So what I suggest is we go into our display settings and we just look at a wireframe and then the wireframe will let us see these inside points. And we can just, we don't have to do all of them, but I'm just gonna pick a few. Keeping in mind, we only divided this up on the inside. We didn't, we didn't add that edge to the outside, we only added it to the inside. So if we were to manufacture this, we would need to be aware that the inside thickness is gonna be slightly different than the outside thickness. We'll say, okay, I'm gonna change my display mode back to visual. And again, you can do this with control and six and control and four, just like we do to, to hide and show those edges. All right, so now we've got this little lip. And again, this is realistic because in reality, we're, we're not gonna have, you know, uh, it's not gonna completely knife edge as it terminates into the body. There is gonna be a lip there. And you can see that we are able to pull those inside faces. So now we could use double-sided tape or when we get back into the, the design workspace, we could add a slight recess for something like um, a pop rivet, right? So we didn't do it all the way around. You certainly could, but you can see we just did it here and we sort of allowed that shape to blend blend away. So I think so far that, that looks pretty good. That was a pretty good um, design. There's obviously some more that we could do to, to make the body fit. We can add an additional edge to make sure it fits there. This side looks pretty good, but you know, we can obviously, we can spend more time to make that work. I don't know that it's worth it. We have all the tools, we know how to do it. We would simply double click and insert an edge here, and then we would push those edges up to the mesh so that way it fits. Um, so at this point, I'm gonna, I'm gonna save it, actually before I do anything else. Then I'm gonna select Finish Form and allow it to turn that into a solid body. And I'm gonna go to Inspect and Section Analysis. I'm gonna pick this plane, and I'm gonna begin dragging it back. So if we view this from the backside, you can see what we created was a solid body. We've got a fender flare that encompasses the tire. It matches the mesh body. We've got a section where we can go in and we can, uh, again, we can use double-sided tape. We can use um, some modification tools to add some rivets in here. And that looks pretty good. We could, uh, we could do more work, obviously, but this was the sort of the first shape that I wanted to explore. Uh, if this is helpful, if um, you know, if you guys enjoy this, this is sort of 
you know, uh, it, it's a deeper dive into making something like this. Obviously, we, we could have done this in probably five minutes instead of 40 minutes. But um, a lot of times it's it's hard to understand some of those little nuances about when we do certain things, when we're going to attach it to the mesh, when we add more edges. So hopefully, hopefully that step in the process was helpful. And hopefully anybody out there trying to do this um, can get a little bit of information from it. I do plan to do another video where I make um, a, a bigger fender flare. I'm not sure if I'm just going to do a speed through on that or, or sort of a, a slow walkthrough. So after you guys watch this video, if you enjoyed this sort of deeper dive look at creating this, um, this shape, this fender flare, then please let me know if you want me to do another version of this, maybe a more drastic version or you know, a more aggressive looking version. If you want me to do a slow video or just, you know, sort of a couple minutes speed through, uh, please let me know. I hate to, you know, record for an hour and then have uh, nobody get any additional help out of it. So please let me know. As always, if you have any comments or questions, please leave them in the video. And as always, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.